What's up guys, Mizzo Frizzo here, and I am very excited to bring you my next tutorial, which is how to set up semi-automatic burst fire and fully automatic firing logic. So as you can see here, I've set up my weapon system with simulated physics pickups and my two weapon system. And just FYI, if you haven't already, I highly recommend you check out those tutorials because this is built off of the top of that and I'm going to be adding more and more to what is becoming quite a robust system. So as you can see here, I've got this weapon, which by default is set to semi-automatic. If I press C, you'll see a print string up the top left that says burst fire, and now I have burst fire. And if I press C again, it will say full auto, and I now have full auto. By the way guys, you are seeing here that I've replaced my character with a metahuman. I have made some animations that look quite nice. I even have procedural recoil and all of this stuff is easily achieved with my other tutorials. So if you want something like this, please have a look at my videos. Um, I'm quite excited to bring you this one today guys because thus far I've only shown you a very basic full auto firing loop which presents some undesirable behavior, such as being able to fire when you're already in the firing loop, allowing the player to fire faster than they should be able to. This system is a bit more advanced and eliminates any of that undesirable behavior. I'm quite proud of what I've come up with and very excited to show you this today, guys. So without further ado, let me show you how to do this. Alrighty guys, so the very first thing we need to do is head into our weapons folder and we're going to create a new enumeration. I'm just going to duplicate enum weapon type here and I'm going to call this enum fire mode. Open this up and I'm going to change the three of these to semi-auto, burst fire, and full auto. And then we need to add this to our BP weapon master. So add a new variable, call it fire mode of type enum fire mode that we just created. And your weapons should automatically in the class defaults be set to the first one. So that'll be semi-auto. And we're just gonna leave it like this for now, but if you wanted to uh, go through each of your weapons, and let's say you've got a pistol, which doesn't do uh, fully auto, um, you know, you could, uh, well, that's a bad example, but you could, um, you know, when you set up the switching fire mode logic, you'd want to set that up for different, uh, sort of a different setup for each weapon. Um, so let's go on and do our firing logic. But uh, very first, I just want to double check that you guys have this in, uh, BPI that interfaces with your weapon. I've renamed this BPI weapon interface, but you may have called yours BPI fire or anything like that. Um, but this one is just going to have a function within it. So if you don't know how to create an interface, just right click and go blueprint, blueprint interface, call this uh, weapon interface, then open it up and add one function and call it fire. Whoops. Rename this one fire and it doesn't need any inputs or outputs. This is basically just going to interface with your weapons. So you can then go to your BP weapon master and in the class settings, add the interface BPI fire or BPI weapon interface. And then what I'm gonna do is over here in interfaces, I compile and then over here, I'm gonna double click fire. Um, and what I'm going to do is just uh, spawn emitter at location. I'm just going to set this to any old emitter. I've got this assault rifle muzzle flash from these weapon packs. 
Um, and I'm also going to um, get the weapon model here and get socket transform and the socket I'm going to get is muzzle. I'm going to call this muzzle on all my weapons or you could call it barrel uh, whatever you want to call it it has to be the exact same spelling and you want to make it the same on all of your weapons um, and you can split this and put in the location and the rotation here and I am also going to play sound at location and uh, I believe there is a rifle a fire cue that will do I'll just browse to this one to see what it is yep that one's fine just like that um, and the location will be the location here of the muzzle socket so just to clarify uh, just to double check that you have this and if you don't to create it what you want to do is so we're gonna set up for the this weapon right here that I've got at the end here my AR4X I am going to open up the skeleton of that weapon and you want to do this for just each of your weapons that you want to set up and you want to make sure you have this muzzle socket right here this one's spelt with a capital M so I'm just going to rename that muzzle or lowercase and make sure that it's in the correct spot right here at the end of the barrel and with the X axes pointed in the direction that the gun is pointing so this one right here pointing out the front of the weapon right there like so now this uh, this is all set up to fire so what I'm going to do is down here uh, I'm not going to do an enhanced input on this one I'm just going to find left mouse button you should of course set up an enha enhanced input uh, so this is where we're going to uh, be firing off our fire logic uh, first I am just going to create a function I'm going to call it fire and in fire what I'm going to do is get my current weapon and find my fire message in my BPI weapon interface and this fire function right here is where you're going to put everything such as calls to your line trace logic calls to your set ammo uh, logic and so on and so forth but for now I am just going to spawn this emitter and sound at location uh, just so that we know we're firing so um, I should be able to just off left mouse button call my fire function just to test that these emitters and sounds are working very quickly I'm going to grab this and check that my weapon is firing very good okay so we're actually not going to call this here um, that was just a test here we go we're going to set up our semi burst and full automatic firing logic uh, so first I'm going to get my current weapon variable and I'm going to right click and convert to a validated get and uh, I'm also going to create a variable here called is firing question mark and I'm going to set it as true when we're firing and upon release of the left mouse button set it as false we're not actually going to need this one uh, here but this might just be useful for later to check if you're firing you might want to stop your player from doing certain other actions such as swapping weapons or reloading uh, and then what we're going to do off the current weapon here is we're going to get the fire mode and then off of fire mode we're going to switch on enum fire mode so if you haven't seen these nodes before this is basically like train tracks whatever enumeration your current weapon is set to it's going to fire off that logic whatever logic is connected to that pin so let's do semi auto first um, and what I'm going to do is also create a variable called can fire this is another one that uh, might come in useful with when you uh, progress through this setup you might want to set can fire on certain things 
such as if you run out of ammunition. We're not going to be doing ammunition today or anything like that, um, but this will be here for later sessions where we do set it up. So uh, the first thing I'm going to do is get a get can fire and make a branch. So check if we can fire. And then straight away after that, what I'm going to do is set can fire as false. So we are going to fire um, and we don't want to be able to fire while we're already firing, if that makes sense. So off here, I can call my function fire. And by the way, do not get confused with this BPI weapon interface fire message. You may want to call this in your blueprint interface. You may want to name this function something else. But uh, for me, uh, I am just going to make sure that I'm not calling this message when I don't want to. This is the one that we call within our fire function right here. So call fire function, target should be self. Uh, and then we're going to put a delay here. And I'm just going to leave it at 0.2 for now. And then I'm going to set can fire as true. And that's it. That's all we need to do for our semi automatic fire. If you uh, want to tie this to a fire rate within your weapon, you can totally do that. And actually, let's do that right now. So in my BP weapon master, I'll just check that I haven't created that already. I haven't. So I'm going to create a new variable in my BP weapon master called fire rate of type float. And um, as default, I'm just going to set this to 0 0.15. Okay, I'm not going to change it in all of my weapons. I'm just going to change the default for now in BP Weapon Master to 0 0.15. But obviously, if you wanted to change the behavior of your weapons, you'd go through each one and change the fire rate right here. And this is, uh, remember, this is going to be the time on the delay. So the lower the number, the faster it will fire. This is going to fire every 0.2 of a second, so five times a second. And then uh, what you can do is just grab your current weapon, get the fire rate, and plug this in here, like so. Nice. So that's this all set up. Let's uh, let's do. Uh, let's actually do. Yeah, let's do burst fire next. So we'll do it in order. Um, what we're going to do is basically we're going to copy a lot of this because we're going to need most of it, but we are going to rearrange it. So I'm going to disconnect this here. And off of can fire, I'm going to set timer by event. And the event that's going to be set by this timer is a custom event that we will call burst fire. And you can plug in this delegate right here into the delegate pin on the custom event. This uh, time right here is going to be our fire rate. So we can get the current weapon and get fire rate. Plug it into time right here. And then uh, what we want to make sure we do is check looping and drop this uh, drop this node down so we can see this initial start delay. So if we leave this at zero, this will not fire right away. This will delay by this time right here, the fire rate. So what we need to do is negate the fire rate off of this initial start delay. So we can get our fire rate and we can multiply it by negative one. Plug this into the initial start delay. And this means that this will fire immediately. There'll be no delay when when we fire. Um, so we don't actually want to connect this right here. We want to move this out a little bit. And we want to find off of burst fire, we want to find a node called do n. This is a tricky node to find because if you type do n, it won't actually pop right up. It'll be somewhere in here. It'll be there. But if you just type don, you should see this under flow control do n. 
and this is a node that will only allow uh, the execution here to execute a certain number of times in the end right here so if you wanted you could uh, you could also tie this to a variable in your weapon um, I'll show you how to do that right now so in your BP weapon master you'll also want to create a new variable um, I don't know what you'd call this I would only leave this uh, at three for a three shot burst fire um, uh, let's just call this burst shots and this will be of type integer and I'm going to compile this and set the default to three and save and then what you can do is just get your current weapon uh, get burst shots plug this in here like so um, okay so after we fire what we want to do is uh, call this again basically so um, I'm going to just check if this counter is equal and sorry I'll just move these over here and make a branch And what we want to do is check if the counter here is equal to the number of burst shots that we're trying to take. So plug that in there. So this is going to fire over and over again until, uh, because we've checked looping, until this has reached the number of burst shots. So this is gonna execute one, two, three times, and then this will equal the burst shots this will ring true and off of true what we're going to do is cancel and invalidate timer sorry ah clear it's clear clear and invalidate timer by handle so you can plug this in here and you can plug the return value on the timer over here into the handle and this will uh, stop this from looping basically uh, then we want to delay by the fire rate and set can fire to true uh, and then we want to plug this uh, last execution pin into the reset pin so this resets this node uh, to be able to fire three times again nice um, oh, we actually want we actually want, yeah, so we have got the delay here. Um, you could set this to something other than the fire rate. You could make another variable again, saying delay between bursts. Um, this will only delay it by the fire rate. Um, so I, I actually might do that. Um, I'll go to BP Weapon Master. I will duplicate fire rate and I will call it uh, delay between bursts okay and I will set that to 0 0.2 so it's just a little bit longer than the actual uh, the actual fire rate um, I will get rid of that get get delay between bursts plug this in here you probably want this to be different to your actual fire rate um, you know otherwise it will just act like fully automatic so there we go that is all set up there let's now do our fully automatic firing logic so it's a little bit simpler than that um, but it is very similar uh, what I'm going to do is copy all of this from up here duplicate it down here plug in the fully auto pin into that branch and then um, we want a new custom event called full auto fire plug the delegate into the event right here and um, 
what we just need is the three nodes from the end here. So to call our fire function, delay by the fire rate, and then set can fire to true again. And then all we need to do off of our released, uh, so off of this one here, I'm going to move this down here and drag over here clear and invalidate timer by handle plug the handle into the return value right here so when we release the left mouse button we are clearing that handle and switching that off the very last thing we need to do is just add the ability to switch between fire modes which is very very simple uh, what I might do is just put it just above here I'm going to find the C key I'm just going to put it on C. Like I said before, you would want to put this on a, uh, ad, uh, you know, advanced um, action mapping. What's it called? Input mapping, uh, advanced. I forget what you call it. Uh, running on fumes here, guys. We're almost there. Okay, let's grab our current weapon and right click and convert to validated get. And then I am going to drag off of current weapon and get the fire mode. I am also going to uh, drag off of current weapon and set the fire mode. And then I am going to drag off of the fire mode here and select. If you plug fire mode into the index on the select, it will change this to an enumeration selection. So this is what you will want to change it to if it's already on this one. So I'm going to set it as if it's on semi-auto, I want it to change to burst fire. If it's on burst fire, I want it to change to fully auto. And if it's on fully auto, I want it to change back to semi-auto. And then what I'm just going to do is put a print string here plug the fire mode into the print string and I'm just going to make this yellow and make it last three seconds. That should be everything guys. So if I hit compile and save here and play, I'm going to go over to my AR4X here and I'm going to, oh, that's not firing. What's going on there? I've done ah sorry guys so we need to set can fire as true um, you could set it as default as being true but all I'm going to do is set it right at the start here I'm going to set can fire as true once again, this is something that you would be wanting to set as part of your other logic, such as uh, you can make a little function check can fire. Um, so that's what you might do here. You'd create a function check can fire, and then you would uh, have that set can fire based on checking your ammo and, and whatever your player is doing. But just for now, we're going to set this up as just uh, setting it to true here. and it will be set to false when we fire and it will set back to true at the end of each of these fire mode logics right here. So sorry about that, that should work perfectly now. So I can hold the left mouse button and it will only fire once because it's on semi-auto. I can mash it to fire some more. If I press C, it'll say burst fire. That is actually doubling up there, uh, which is a mistake. Um, I've made another mistake here. What's going on? I'm setting, uh, because I'm setting burst fire to true, uh, sorry, can shoot, can fire to true um, when I fire. I might actually just get rid of this. This was not a good idea. I will set can fire to true by default um, and that will fix that. 
Sorry about that, guys. It's been a long day. But I was just so excited to bring this to you, but that I could not wait. So we got single fire there. Press C to switch to burst fire. And now, no matter how much I mash it, it will not fire faster than that 0.15 fire rate with the 0.2 uh, burst, you know, delay burst, delay between bursts. So that's working, and then C again to switch to full auto. Sorry about the mistakes there, guys. We got there in the end. If this tutorial has been of any use or value to you whatsoever, please hit like and subscribe, and I will see you on the next one.